the title of this presentation is Operational Excellence. Um, but what really I wanted to start with is maybe explain what I do. So I'm a performance improvement consultant with PwC, and I have a, a sad fascination about what makes organizations perform. Uh, more specifically, what makes both organizations, um, people and teams, and what makes them perform better than each other and than other organizations. So I guess um, to start with, there's a really interesting question that um, I continually think about, and that's <clears throat> what is it that makes a particular team better or higher performing than another team? Um, in fact, it's became so sad, this fascination with this, that I come home each night and uh, speak to my wife about it over dinner, and uh, uh, she just tells me to shut up now. It's getting really sad. So the, just to bring this to life, what I thought I would do is um, talk to you about... Um, an organization, a shared service center organization I worked with, uh, and this will bring to life why I have this fascination with performance improvement. Um, it was a shared service center. Uh, had around 400 people in the UK, um, all of the typical processes, and uh, it had some real challenges. Uh, it needed to improve performance really quickly, um, but the, the complication was uh, it couldn't change technology. So we were brought in as PwC to work with this organization to improve performance, but we couldn't change technology and we couldn't re-engineer processes. And the reason for this was um, the organization had invested heavily in an in ERP uh, system in, in one of the other countries. So the typical levers for improvement that we would pull, we, uh, just, uh, we just couldn't pull them. So my, my background is in lean and performance improvement. Um, and without the ability to re-engineer processes, but with a target uh, on our head and having to uh, improve this organization quickly, we were left with uh, quite a challenge. So I guess, what do you think we did? What, what were you left with if you can't uh, change processes, uh, but you need to improve performance? Any ideas? Change people, yep. So um, being an engineer, frankly, about four or five years ago, I didn't know much about changing people. Um, but if you think of the problem, we had to improve performance. We had to improve its cost base. We have to improve productivity. But we couldn't change processes, and we couldn't change technology. So all we were left with was people. So we had to figure out what to do with people to improve teams and how they performed. So um, we conducted a study at this organization, and I've simplified the, the data, but this is, this is basically the graph of what we found. So what this shows is performance on the left-hand side, and there's five different teams. And uh, the interesting thing about this organization is one of the teams, Team B, um, was almost 100% more productive than the other teams. Now, this was quite a surprise to me, so I, I really didn't know what was going on. Now, bearing in mind, these five teams um, conducted the same process, had the same systems, the same technology, um, and they processed the same work, in effect. Um, but one of the teams uh, was particularly high performing. So what do you think is going on? Any ideas? Okay, so, so let, let me just add to the complication of this story. So we, we then started to study Team B, which was the highest performing team. And, and this is what we, we seen when we looked at this, this uh, team um, over um, six months. So in effect, what it's showing is, uh, this is a month of data. It's showing that on two days of the month only, every single month, that this team moved down to the average of all the other teams in terms of performance. Um, and I had absolutely no idea why. What was creating this performance dip? First of all, why was this team higher performing than the others? And why, in two days of a month only, every single month, did this performance drop? And we tested everything, we tried everything, we looked to see how people were operating. Um, and the only thing that we found was a correlation between the person who ran the team, the team leader, and when she was present and when she wasn't present. So the, the, the lady who ran this uh, team, Team B, was called Claire, 
And of two days every single month, she had to go to hospital because she had a, a medical issue. Uh, and she went almost in the same two days every month. And of the two days when she wasn't present, the performance of the team dropped down to the average of all the others. Now, I found this absolutely fascinating. Just why is it, and how is it possible that when an individual is present within the shared service center, that the performance almost doubles within the team? So it's this fascination that I guess for the last four years, um, certainly within PwC, I've been looking to study. And it's raised a few interesting questions. Could you actually replicate this across other teams and across other individuals? And could you replicate this um, across other organizations? So um, the conclusion we came to was yes, that it was possible to dramatically increase the performance of organizations by essentially changing behaviors. It wasn't always necessary to change technology or processes, but it was possible to dramatically improve performance of organizations by changing people's behaviors. So we, uh, this is another graph that shows the, the performance improvement. We aptly called this, uh, this uh, impact that this team leader was having on the team and the organization, the Claire effect, and uh, just after, after the, uh, the lady who ran the team. And in effect, what we've been doing in PwC is tried to replicate this Claire effect across different teams and different organizations. Uh, and uh, we've been doing this very successfully. So one of, a number of different questions uh, came up in my head when we started to understand what was going on in this organization. The first one is, what exactly was Claire doing that was so different to everyone else? Uh, and was she doing anything different? Was this just luck? Was this just the Hawthorne effect when she was present, people up to her game? And what we fundamentally found is Claire, uh, and this sounds so simple, Claire was just being a team leader. She was just doing her job the way she should. And what I mean by this is, Claire was a team leader. She spent all of her time managing her team, coaching people, managing performance, and problem solving. And she spent 70% of her time doing this, along with a whole load of, I guess, I would call good operational management techniques. When we then look to study uh, Claire's peers, and we, we do this in many organizations, we study what leaders do, um, we don't find that this is the norm. Actually, what we find is frontline leaders, uh, one or two levels above the people we are processing, um, don't spend their time with their teams, they don't spend their time managing performance, they don't spend their time problem solving. They actually spend their time typically firefighting and running projects and implementing initiatives. But the one thing that we typically find is they don't do is to actually be a team leader. So simply what we have tried to do is to look to codify how you make a good team leader how you recreate this so that operational excellence is fundamentally embedded within organizations. Um, and I guess the obvious question to ask next is, you know, if it's this simple and all you need to do is to get uh, team leaders to start managing, why don't you just do it? Why doesn't that not just happen? Um, and the reason for that, I think, is quite an interesting one. I think it's more to do with the thinking and I think that when we look to invest in organizations to improve them, to make them more productive, um, we don't typically look to people all the time. I'm not sure, I think we think this is almost soft, um, but I can assure you when you look to double the productivity of a team, this is not soft, it's hitting hard numbers. So I think that part of the challenge of doing this is that there's a mindset that investing in people heavily, as much as you would in technology, you wouldn't get the gains. And um, my experience is, and we've replicated this across multiple industries, that this is absolutely possible. So I think um, it's really important that we continue to invest in our people. And I think it's important that we have a solution in the marketplace that provides a way to build capabilities of frontline staff so that we can consistently achieve high performance within organizations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark.